friends, is your liver inflamed? Could you have a parasite? In this video, we're going to talk about the most common parasites that infect the liver. Now, if you have recurrent right upper quadrant abdominal pain, cramping, bloating, nausea, or diarrhea, these could all be signs you have a parasite. Parasites can be very difficult to diagnose. Sometimes the stool collection helps. Sometimes we need to check blood tests. And sometimes you actually need a procedure where the doctor can visibly see the parasite and remove it. We often think of parasitic liver infection as only affecting those who live in developing countries. That's no longer true because of traveling, immigration, and cohabiting with animals. Every year, there are a few cases that happen here in the USA. Oftentimes, people don't realize that common things that are considered relatively safe may expose them to deadly parasites. Petting zoos or even touching your own pets can be a source. The fur of canines can be contaminated with the eggs of a tapeworm called Echinococcus granulosis. If you don't wash your hands and accidentally ingest the eggs, they will hatch in your small intestine and most commonly invade your liver where they can grow into giant cysts. Inside these cysts are other smaller infectious parasites. If these cysts rupture, the person can have an acute anaphylactic reaction, which is actually a deadly allergic reaction. Infected foods are also a common source of parasites. If you like to eat raw, undercooked, salted, or pickled, or smoked freshwater fish, just know that you put yourself at risk of another parasite called Clonorchis sinensis, which is actually a flat worm. Now, you actually don't get immunity from repeat exposure. This parasite can often cause inflammation in the biliary tree, which is an integral part of your liver used to digest fats like cholesterol. Clonorchis sinensis is even the cause of a deadly bowel the cancer called cholangiocarcinoma. Water is an efficient way to transmit parasites. When people eat plants that grow in water, like watercress, they can be infected with Fascicola hepatica, a fluke that also infects herbivores like sheep. Most infections are mild, but if you get a large burden of flukes in your body, it can cause fever and right upper quadrant abdominal pain when the fluke is migrating in your liver. Your liver is an amazing filter organ designed to protect the rest of your body. But unfortunately, it may not be able to clear the burden of infection and an abscess can form. This is how amoebic liver abscesses start if you get exposed to a parasite called Intamoeba histolytica. Infected people don't always look sick. People can also give this parasite to each other. When I travel, I only drink from bottled or carbonated water because I want to avoid dirty water infested with parasites. If you want to use your own water filter, make sure the filter says absolute one micron or less. I always stay away from fountain drinks, pre-cut fruit, raw vegetables, street foods, and unpasteurized milk, cheese, and dairy products. In 2023, there were a few endemic cases of malaria in America, which is unusual. Hopefully, this is not a new trend. Usually about 2,000 cases of malaria are diagnosed in the United States every year, usually related to travel. My friend got malaria and his doctors missed it. He had fevers, chills, splitting headaches, and went to the emergency room three times. For the first two times, he was given pain meds and discharged. The third time, he lucked out. There was an infectious disease doctor seeing another patient that overheard his story and sent a thick and thin blood smear to make the diagnosis. He had a type of malaria called Plasmodium vivax that hides in the liver, and a separate course of medication is needed to get rid of the malaria that hides dormant in the liver. But these medications can cause really bad side effects in people who are very young, pregnant people, or those with an enzyme deficiency called G6PD. In G6PD deficient people, taking certain malaria medications can make them severely anemic. G6PD stands for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and is responsible for the first step in an energy pathway called pentose phosphate pathway that helps all your cells make energy to counteract oxidative stress. People with G6PD deficiency, when they're exposed to certain foods or medicines, they get hemolytic anemia where their blood cells rupture. And we can test people for G6PD deficiency. By the way, it's not just malaria drugs that's a problem. Here's a list of common drugs to avoid if you have G6PD deficiency. Malaria is tricky to treat, not just because the drugs can be toxic. There is rampant drug-resistant malaria around the world. Depending on where you get malaria, will determine which drugs we can use to treat your infection. The best thing to do is never to get bitten by mosquitoes. And if you want to learn how to avoid those nasty insects, watch the next video.